Hi everyone and welcome to the audiobook launch engine. This is my first mini engine. It's going to be more tightly focused on live actions to sell a live book. Um, so there's not really going to be any pre-order marketing. There's not going to be any big launch oomph marketing. It's going to be about consistent steady sales. Um, so welcome to lesson one, intro to selling audiobooks. From this point on, I'm going to be recording our live videos every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So mark your calendars, and if you can join me, I'd love to have you along with your questions and examples. Um, and the more interaction I have, I think the more gems we get out of the course because um, I'm here and ready to answer any questions. And sometimes you ask things I'm not thinking already um, or get me to explain something deeper that I hadn't thought about explaining. Um, so. Welcome. Feel free to leave a comment to say hello or to ask a question. Today I'm just going to kind of talk about what to expect from the course. And um, for those of you who haven't taken my book launch classes before or who have but uh, need a refresher, every single course is different. Um, there's a different focus. There's different information. Um, but also it's largely dictated by the students and what you want to learn. So I'll be putting up polls and saying, hey, where would you like to focus next? What would you like me to do? Um, and giving you some ideas and things to think about. Um, I also now give homework lessons with each video so that those of you who are keeping pace with me can do the work right alongside of me and start seeing results in real time. Now, beyond this group, we also have the Teachable site, which is where you went to register, and you'll find the book launch, the audio book launch course right here. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Um, if you haven't enrolled in the Quick Tip Engine, that's free. Definitely do that. As each lesson becomes available, um, the video and the notes slash transcript will be posted up in the course. So that usually happens within two days of a course being recorded. And just as an example, you can see here, here's the recently completed launch for profit class. It's uh, split into units and each video has, let's do this one. Each video has pretty detailed notes. So if you prefer to read rather than to watch the video, by all means, come and do that. Um, if you have questions, pop them on any video. Um, there's a place to comment on Teachable. You can, of course, comment on Facebook. And hopefully, you love what we learn. Um, I'm really excited because I've never really made a huge effort to sell. I see comments coming through, but they're not showing to me. Okay, I've never made a huge effort to, or any effort actually, to sell audiobooks in the past. So I'm really excited about taking all I know and have learned um, and using that to sell some audiobooks for me, sell some audiobooks for you. I'm working on growing the Lit Ring audiobook presence. For those of you who don't know, I own that company as well um, to help authors sell there because I see it as a real hole in the market. But I want to sell some of my own books. And the cool thing about audiobooks is even more than selling an individual book and making an individual royalty is if you create a new customer, you get a bounty. That's 50 bucks. So that's pretty awesome. That's a lot more than 30 cents if you have a 99 cent book. So we're going to focus on both increasing sales overall and also getting those bounties. We're going to talk about the different types of audiobook customers you can get. There's the people who are subscribed and are using their credits. Um, there's members of the new Romance Unlimited program with Audible. Um, there's people who have never tried an audiobook before and are willing to try it out. Those are the people I'd really focus on for a couple reasons. One is bounty. <laughs> like I said, you, a lot more money in bounties. Um, and two is it's a bit more fun because you can focus on all the ways that an audiobook is awesome. Like, and you can present it to your readers, like your commute, gardening, um, doing dishes, exercising. <laughs> That's what I need to do. And all the ways that you can bring an audiobook with you where you might not necessarily be able to bring a print or ebook. So focusing on those and getting them willing to try it. Um, also for audiobooks, another great audience to market to are your super fans who love your ebooks and want to experience the series all over again. 
So instead of rereading, maybe in preparation for a new book in the series, instead of rereading the ebooks, why not upgrade to the audiobook? If you bought it on Amazon, there's a discount and you can push that and um, kind of bring the book to life in a whole new way. So I'm going to, um, again, questions very welcome with this intro. This is just kind of a getting to know you what we'll cover um, any searing questions you have now. And uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the things we're going to talk about. So in those sales and bounties and convincing people that audio is for them, obviously you need to know who to tell this message to. You need to know if you're dealing with a diehard fan who wants to read the series again, if you're dealing with somebody who is willing to try audiobooks but not sure it's for them, or if you're dealing with somebody who's an avid audio reader um, and has a credit to use. So the number one thing is, first of all, making it available. So I'll do a poll to see if we want to talk about production at all um, in this course, which is really focused on marketing. I myself, I have contracts with Tantor for my Sled Dog series, um, with Christian Audio, which is another traditional publisher, um, for my First Street Church romances, and then I self-publish my um, my other books, my Cupid's Bow. Basically, all new series are taken on by traditional publishers now uh, for me, but I'm working on getting my backlist. I'm actually redoing it because... I had audio done before um, on a narration split, and my narrator was pretty good for um, somebody willing to work with no money up front, but I started working with a professional narrator who um, took pretty good to flip it amazing. Um, she's a moose. <laughs> in my newest audio book, she had to learn how to do a moose call, and in one of my books, she had to do 20 different Indian accents, and she just does it all in stride, and it's amazing. Um, and we've developed a really good relationship, and I can actually see if she'll come in this group and answer questions about production and maybe get her to do a guest lecture. But for me, it was worth it to pay the other narrator out of the contract and then pay up front for the professional narrator because it really does make such a big difference. She's a SAG qualified and works with a lot of the, the big publishers. She does my Christian audio series. And for me, it's a no-brainer to just have that top quality product when I'm trying to bring readers over. Um, so that's something what I'm, I'm doing. Uh, Tony says, I don't know if I missed it, but who do you use to make an audiobook? So again, if we want to do a class on production, we certainly can. I can talk about working with audio publishers and getting contracts. Obviously, I can't guarantee anything there, but I can kind of say how it worked for me. Um, we can talk about ACX. There's a lot of alternatives. There's ACX, which is through Amazon. There's Find Away Voices with Draft to Digital. Um, I think Kobo has a program. Um, you could record your own audiobooks, which I don't recommend unless you have voice acting experience and a proper narration booth because there's a lot to do with um, soundproofing and getting a professional mic and editing out the breaths and the ums and the ahs and Getting a de for all your, if you have a lisp a little bit or a cold. <laughs> I have a cold right now, so I would not make a good audiobook. So there's a lot to consider. I strongly, strongly, strongly advise not doing audiobooks until you either have a contract with a publisher or um, can get a really quality product out there. Um, it, it just makes so much difference. And it's a whole new side to learn because. Yes, you use some of the same tools like your website and your newsletter and Facebook ads to sell audiobooks, but it's a completely new audience you're learning to sell to. And as I just explained, it's actually several different audiences and each needs to be approached differently. So I'm going to guide you through all of that. And I will put up the poll because Becky's going to remind me um, about if we want to cover production or any tips from my narrator, 100%. Um, but the first thing you need to do is get your stuff out there. And actually, homework for this lesson, uh, if you already have audiobooks or if you're interested in having audiobooks in the future, I want you to go to SoundCloud.com and open a profile. You don't need to do a paid one. Just open a profile and put up the audio retail sample of an existing book that's already been done or just record an audio message for your readers of you talking. 
um, just get something up there. Establish a profile. You can see I have, um, as audiobooks are completed, I just put the retail sample up there and people can listen to the samples of the books. And um, that's helpful for me in a couple ways. I will show you. The first way, just looking to see if there's more comments, is that I'm able to um, promote that on my website. You'll see for books that have audio, oh, let's do. So on my site for books that have audio, they have these purple, these green buttons that turn purple with the little earphones to hover with links to Audible and iTunes. And a lot of people don't realize that if they've published through ACX, it is on iTunes. <laughs> um, they have trouble finding it. But you just search iTunes, Melissa Storm, Let There Be Love Audio, and there it is. So it brought me the um, iBooks, but I can then click more by this author. I don't have a techno dubstep career. There's just two Melissa Storms, but you can go to top audiobooks, see all, and here they are. So here's the one I was looking for. This is my Tantor book. So uh, they are there. So have those links available. Um, and then I actually have, so I get requests for audiobooks, but even more than that, print books. Um, they want to know what's available. So on my books menu on my website, ebooks is all of my books. They're all here. Um, and if you drop down, then there's a paperbacks. And I've gathered the books that are available in print right here. And if they click it, they'll go to the full listing for that book. Where they can get the ebook, print, audio. Um, and then audiobooks, I have a page for that too. And across the top here, I have the links for the different audiobook providers. So Audible, iTunes, Christian Audio, Amazon Audio, and SoundCloud. And then I put the SoundCloud widget in there since I uploaded to the site. I'm able, and I'll cover this in a lesson, I'm able to embed it and show off the cover, and they can listen to a sample without leaving my site. And if they want more about that book, they just click and it takes them to the page where again, they can buy what they need to buy. Um, I also create um, <laughs> I don't want to show the secret URL, but I want to show you something. Okay, let's see. I also create 3D images for my audiobooks to show that they're available. So here's an example for my love's prayer. This one is actually an audio CD and I can talk about audio CD versus MP3 formats too um, because I have both uh, for my books. But you can see here, I created this 3D, come on, created this 3D of the audio book cover and then I just put, to make it more robust, I put the flat cover behind it but I'll create little groupings for my books to show the different formats they're available in. So here are paperbacks. That means it's available in paperback. There's an audio. I recently had all my covers redone, so I don't think I have a bundle of all three together anymore. But yeah, that's helpful too, to just really show that it's available in audio. SoundCloud. Yes, Gina, go to soundcloud.com. The homework is to go to soundcloud.com and create a profile to upload at least one soundtrack. So a retail, a retail audio sample or a sound bite of you talking to your readers. And I'll teach you how to integrate those widgets, how to link to them, all of that good stuff. And then I just put my logo back there. I have the star because I have a premium account. And the reason I have a premium account is because I have a full audiobook <laughs> here. Um, and we'll talk about that as a method too. I want to know who would be open to audio. Um, not everybody's excited. Some readers just will not read an excerpt. 
Even if they're really looking forward to a book, they want to experience it all at once. Um, so rather than, hey, go listen to the sample, listen to the first chapter for free, I made one of my short stories available totally free. Um, so it's a half hour audio file, uh, but it's a complete story. And I have worked that. So this is my newsletter account. This is Active Campaign. And Active Campaign is pretty nice, but I'll talk about how to how you could do the same things with MailerLite and MailChimp and whichever retailer you are with as well. Um, but I tag, come on, I'm trying to show you what I do. I track a whole bunch of stuff from my readers, um, what they're clicking on, what they like, how they sign up. Um, and I have a tag for audio. So I know that over 4,000 of my readers, um, they might be lit ring readers, they might be my author list readers. Um, with just the tag information, I'm not sure. I'd have to combine it with the list information. But I know at least 4,386 people on my list, they like audiobooks. And that's info that takes a while to, to gather. Like I said, with LitRing, I've been trying to gather this info on audio for a while um, because I want to start being able to um, send beginning of the month emails with this your audiobook for this month recommendation or free audiobook codes or whatever to get them excited and to create an outlet for authors to sell audiobooks. Um, so one thing I do for my list is I have an automation, my welcome sequence. If I can find it somewhere here. I have a lot of automations. <clears throat> I really like automations. So welcome to Melissa Storm's newsletter. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sick today. Okay. Here we go. So the first free book I give them, let me edit this email so you can see what I do. So that short story I have as, available as a free ebook for my newsletter. It's 5,000 words, as well as that free audiobook. So when I write to them to offer their first free book, they can click to get a free ebook copy or listen to the free audio. And if they listen to the free audio, the reason I love Active Campaign is that it automatically tags them for me, so I don't even have to worry about it. I just need to create the opportunity for them to show interest in audio, and my, my, um, my newsletter provider does the rest. You can see that if I click that, here's the link, and it goes to that SoundCloud byte. If I click this gear, it's not adding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So then I add a tag, audio. So if they click that audiobook link, they are interested in audiobooks, conceivably, probably. Um, I also ask them questions like, do you like audiobooks, yes or no? And if they click yes, they get the tag. And just lots of little opportunities to collect that information about your list. I have another way that I gauge interest in audio. Um, Active Campaign can track which pages on my website people are going to and combine that with the list data. So I know that if somebody ends up on my audiobooks page two times or more, they're probably interested in audiobooks. So I could start a series of emails to sell them those audiobooks um, or to offer a free code. Um, another thing I do. In my, once I know retailer preference, here we go, audiobooks. So I have an email in one of my automations specifically about audio, a whole new way to love reading. And this is kind of selling people who maybe haven't read an audiobook before, but how they could enjoy it but they can multitask, they can garden, knit, long drive, daunting list of chores. Um, and I let them know that I have these audiobooks available, including one free, and I lead them to that page. So a lot of it is getting people to, getting your existing audience to know it's there. That's the first part. To find those new readers, ads are great because with the bounties, 
you can have a higher click, um, a cost per click or a lower conversion, and you can still make great ROI. So we'll definitely be diving deep into ads for this course. Um, uh, Jackie wants to know, would it be okay to do a 3D like yours if we use ACX? It's not technically a CD. I think that's fine. Um, most readers don't expect to use CDs. I can tell you that for Christian Audio, I had to buy, I want to say 2,000 copies. <laughs> 2,000 copies of my audio, my first audiobook they did because I either had to pay full price to get a few or I could get a huge discount to get 2,000 of them. So I was like, yeah, no problem. Super easy to sell 2,000 audio CDs. Um, even when I meet people in person, they're like, oh yeah, I'll go download it from Audible. Even if I have like a physical CD, oh yeah, I'll go get it from Audible. So that's something else we can cover in this lesson is how to sell physical audiobooks because um, I always think they're really attractive when I go to in-person events and it's something different and cool, but people still buy the print books instead. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to be working on how to sell those audio CDs I've amassed um, that take up a lot of my closet. So that's a whole different type of tactic um, that really heavily requires in-person marketing. Tony says, you make a CD from what? In ACX, would you be able to make a CD and would you be responsible for paying royalties to a narrator? So I have audio CDs from my contracts with Christian Audio. They put um, Love's Prayer and Love's Promise of the First Street Church Romances onto CD. Um, they also now distribute my books, Diving for Pearls and A Colorful Life and put them on audio CD. So the four of those are available on audio CD. After um, I bought the 2,000 <laughs> copies of Love's Prayer, I chilled out and did not buy any more audio CDs. They send me five copies whenever they publish a book. Um, when I signed the Sled Dog series, which is my most popular series, but it's pretty new, when I signed that with Tantor, um, one of their things was that they don't do audio CDs because there's not a good ROI on it. So... Um, Tantor gave me better advance than Christian Audio, and they're much quicker and really professional. Um, I love Christian Audio, too, but Tantor is also awesome. But they would not negotiate to add an audio CD. They did not want to do that. That was part of my contract. Some authors might get them. I didn't. Um, but having my CDs with Christian Audio, it's pretty cool because friends from different parts of the country will see my books in a library display. Um, because Christian Audio is a traditional publisher um, and a respected one in the Christian romance space, which is where I am. So they actually do send my books around, my audiobooks, and I actually do get royalty checks. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. I don't think I've earned back my, um, my purchase of 2,000 books yet, 2,000 CDs, but, um, you know, both series are relatively new, so we'll see. Um, you, when you self-publish through ACX, you cannot have an audio CD. I'm not sure if any of the others, like Find Away Voices, offer that, but it's really expensive to create the CDs and the packaging. Um, and I don't think it's worth it to try to self-publish that. Uh, it, you'd be better burning it like one of those old-fashioned, excuse me, old-fashioned CDRs, burning it to a disc and and self-designing a case. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's so much better to have it digital. It's how people listen. You know, they um, set their phone up with Bluetooth to their car speakers or they, you know, have their earbuds in. Very few people are using the CDs. Um, it's kind of a throwback. And I feel like those who are more married to old technology, they like print books and they would choose a print book over an audio book. Um, so I think audio CDs are a separate bundle of issues that require pretty much a completely different way of selling. So um, in my digital store, um, some of you have seen the preview of Lit Ring 2.0, which is coming soon, and it's a social shop interface that allows authors to sell signed books, swag, digital books, etc., membership boxes. I'm going to be finding ways to sell my audio CDs. <laughs> That's a big goal. I'm going to be bundling it and hey, buy, buy the audio with the print because since uh, Kindle Press owns the digital, I can't do, I can't combine that. So it's a whole lot of things. Um, let's see. Um, 
Gina says, LOL, my first CD came out in December. I had no idea what to do about them. I know. <laughs> so I'll have to include that in the poll too. Becky, please remind me that I need to find out if people want to have lessons on selling audio CDs too. Because it's my job to figure these things out and <laughs> teach them to you. And if I fail at something and if something doesn't work, I'm going to save you from making the same mistakes. So one of those things that you could not make a mistake in is buying 2,000 copies of an audio CD because you're excited about it. <laughs> um, like just pay more, you know, buy them, like buy them full price and only get 10. And when you can get rid of those and actually get people to pay money for them from your hands rather than just giving them to family, then you can start thinking about buying them in huge bulk. But don't just buy 2,000 audio CDs. I don't even know if that's how many I have because I don't even look at the box anymore. <laughs> but we have them and they exist and it's and they're very well done. So um, Libby says, hi, Melissa, can people buy complete audiobooks on SoundCloud or do you provide a link to Audible on your website? <laughs> Excuse me. SoundCloud is like a social media station um, and that's largely used by indie musicians to preview their tracks and stuff. So there is an audiobooks category and a very small audiobooks community there. Um, I don't know about it being monetized, um, but if that's something that is of interest to people, I can definitely figure it out um, and figure out how to sell your audiobooks directly to readers. A problem with that is um, I don't think you legally can um, because if you have an ACX exclusive contract, you've agreed not to sell it anywhere else. Even if you pay your narrator up front and don't do a royalty share, you still have a deal with ACX. I can't take, um, I don't even have the full digital files for my Tantor or Christian audiobooks, but that would be against my contract with them. So the only way I could think of selling them direct would be if you recorded them yourself and have a non-exclusive audible arrangement. Maybe, you know, if you had a non-exclusive audible arrangement and paid per finish hour or PFH, what they call it on audible, um, if you paid that way and selected non-exclusive, which is a smaller royalty, then you could hand sell. I don't recommend it because um, get the bounty. <laughs> like it's such a huge incentive. Get the bounty. If you want to sell direct to readers, focus on paperbacks or digital, depending on what you're comfortable with or both or swag. But audio, it creates a lot more tech problems because it's huge files. Um, and I can't think of like for digital, at least you have book funnel as an incredible support system who can help your readers. And there's, there's nothing like that for hand selling audio. Um, so I, I wouldn't do that. Um, but for SoundCloud, yes, I got permission to put this full half hour story up here, um, from a narrator and from the company, they let me put this up here and I use it kind of to get people interested in my audiobooks. And I haven't really done anything to be honest, but it's there and I'm going to be using it. You better believe it during this course. Um, and it's especially helpful because that narrator has done, she did this book. She's doing my full Cupid's Bow series. She's doing my Christian audio series and she's done my standalones. So she's done all my books except for the ones with Tantor because they chose their own narrator for me. Um, Libby, have you seen sales that you can attribute to the samples on SoundCloud? Probably because I have not tried at all to sell my audiobooks yet. Um, even that automation I showed you, that hasn't gone out yet. Um, it's way far down, um, deep down a list um, of like 20 emails that and the readers haven't gotten there yet because I recently set it up. Um, so any audiobooks sales I have are from the efforts of the publisher um, the efforts of my audiobook narrator, because that's another great reason to have a professional, is they help sell the books. Um, or just because my existing readers found them. Um, it has, I have not actively tried to sell audio at all. And this course is going to change all that because I know how to do all the individual pieces. I can do the website. I can do the newsletter. I can do the Facebook ads. You know, what about AMS ads for audio? Let's try that. Um, I can do all that stuff. And now I want to apply it with an intentional audio strategy. 
um, by honing in on the unique needs of audio users. And we're going to figure that all out together and we're going to learn and succeed all together. And like I said, when I make mistakes, you guys know it, I own it. I tell you how to fix it and avoid it. Um, so that's some of the things that are coming up. Are there any other questions? Um, <laughs> Jackie's already done the homework during the video. You're supposed to pay attention in class, young lady. <laughs> she says, got my one audio loaded on SoundCloud. So yes, after you do the homework, please do share your audio samples in the group. Let's, let's hear each other's books um, and know what genres we're working with. Um, it's really exciting. Jackie, since you're an overachiever, you have a second homework assignment and <laughs> you have a second homework assignment and that is to include the widget embed on your website. And I'll show you very quickly how to do that. Um, and everybody else can, who has something to upload, you can do this too. So to add the widget, you're going to um, go to your SoundCloud page and click share and then embed. And there are three different ways you can do it. So the way that I have it on my website is the big book cover. You have to make sure it stays a square. Um, I think the most popular um, way to do it is the little image next to the sound waves and then there's just the sound wave bar. So people who do that sometimes put it underneath the cover. What I recommend is the middle choice and you can see the code here. And if you have a custom color you like to use on your website, you can actually grab that color code and you can customize the button to match. See, I just changed that button to that maroony color. And so then you just grab the code, control C, and you can drop it in. Beautiful. It's not obviously not going to work in a Facebook comment, um, but you can drop it into your site on HTML view. So you wouldn't do that on a visual view because it's code, but if you put it in the HTML view, you're going to create that gorgeous widget. Um, so you can write a blog post about it. You can add it alongside your book cover. Um, if you're using uh, my book table plugin, there's a place to add the audio file there. Go nuts. Uh, sorry, there's a thing with the dog today. Uh, my chihuahua that I'm obsessed with, Sky Princess, her mom needs to be rehomed. Um, and the woman's very, very upset because she loves this dog so much. And I'm just like... Um, hello, we'll take the dog. So that's happening, getting a sixth dog. But how can you say no to your dog's mom? Anyway, um, so yes, <laughs> that's the homework. Sign up for SoundCloud. Upload your retail audio sample. You can download that direct from ACX. If you're with a publisher like Tantor, just email them. Um, Haley's a good asset there. Email them and say, hello, may I please have the retail audio sample and the book cover? Make sure you have the book covers for all your audiobooks. They're sized differently. Make sure you have those available and ready to go. If you want to create 3D versions of the cover, throw that into the homework too. I use eCover Authority, um, which is super inexpensive and super handy. I use it to make um, my audio and e-reader 3Ds. Here's all the different templates. So this is the audio one I use. And I do these different e-readers to make them 3D. They have some paperback options too, but I like doing them by hand in Photoshop better. But here they are. So yes, do all that. Okay, the puppy thing. <laughs> do all that and um, share your links and let's see what we're working with. I'm gonna create some polls so you can tell me what you wanna learn and what you wanna skip. And we are going to make some mad money selling audiobooks together. I'm really excited because I consider this a huge growth area, especially if you can make your own customer base. The bounty makes it possible because they keep that ROI favorable. Um, and maybe we can all get healthy together too, because I need to. So we can all work out and listen to audiobooks. We can listen to each other's audiobooks and take joint writery hikes. I don't know. But lots to learn, lots to do. Thank you for being here. And I'm really excited 
Also remember to mark your calendars every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's when the magic happens. Um, Libby says she agrees. It is potentially a, all caps, huge market. Agreed. So let's get all get there together. This is a mini course, but I'm going to do it as long as it takes. So you keep those questions coming and I'll keep the answers coming. So thanks guys. And I'm really looking forward to it. Bye.